Good morning, traders. Can you guys uh, hear me and see my screen? Uh, if you can, uh, in the uh, advanced webinar chat, just uh, type yes. All right, excellent. Thank you, two spoons. Um, all right, welcome to the live uh, trading webinar here with Scott Pulsini. We do this every Thursday. Uh, it is live trading. It is in demo paper trading mode. So, uh, uh, you know, we want to remain un unemotional, but we want insight to uh, uh, a professional like Scott Pulsini and how he is trading and using bookmap uh, and reading order flow and applying it to the way uh, that uh, uh, he looks at the market. Um, so uh, you guys know who Scott Pulsini is. Uh, if not, look it up. Uh, he's uh, got really, really uh, uh, fantastic uh, background in trading uh, and we're very lucky to have uh, a, a trader of this uh, um, uh, experience uh, here in these webinars. He does offer mentorship as well. Uh, so I'll put this uh, into the chat. You guys can uh, reach out to Scott. You've got his email here. So if you have any questions, you've got his trading room here. You've got an educational course from him as well. Uh, any any kind of questions like answered by his website. Um, I also have his Twitter feed here. Uh, we've got to go through, through the disclosures here so you understand what you're getting involved with, and then we're going to go right into the live markets. Uh, general disclosure, uh, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo paper trading mode, and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, with that said, uh, let's turn it over to Scott and let him take it away. Go ahead, Scott. Are you there? Hello. Hey, hey. <laughs> What's going on? Hey, hey, there you are. How are you? All right. What are you saying? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. So uh, let's uh, let me get your uh, screen up here. Ah. Uh, and. You see my screen or no? Yeah, hold, hold on a minute. I I just it's just I'm still kind of all thumbs here. Um, I'm I'm getting it down. <laughs> okay. Hold on a minute. Sorry. You gotta uh, mute that like you did last week too because you can hear every single person that comes in here. Okay. Yeah, I'll do it. Whatever you did. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know where it is now. Um, so, okay, I think we're all set. Okay, cool. You got my, see my book map? Yes. And I'm restreaming okay. it, so if so, you can, if it, someone can't see or uh, join Scott's, uh, then join mine, and there will be another one that will come up here shortly as well to be able to join. Okay. Um, so you can see you're currently long ES. <clears throat> little wacky move here after the... Uh, CPI number came out and there was another number and then it looked like we were going to crash and then we did a straight bungee jump rally just like old just like old times all right so we'll go over why I got long here in a second but now we have a, a new volume event coming in you can see the sell ice come in so now I can trail my stop for um, this was actually an ad we'll go over all this but now that something new came in my my objective here was the red lug so we'll go over these level levels here for people that don't haven't seen me use them but that's at 8150 um but you know 
that's my target, but if something comes in real time by him, then I'm going to adjust, you know, my expectations. And right here, we see a thousand cell ice. Uh, so I'm going to draw this zone, and now I can trail my staff from my current position. And, or I could add, I don't think I'm going to because we're so close to that red lug. Um, but we'll see here. Let's get this marked up first. So that's that cell ice, he's black for cell ice. Um, so it's pretty tight though, I could probably add to this, let me see. So the ATR right now is pretty high, 8.8. Uh, .8. So recently I've been using 0.75 or 75% of an ATR to for entries, exits, we'll go over all that, but I moved it to 80%. Uh, because I keep getting st stopped out to the exact tick and it actually has been working very well. So um, it saved me like three or four losers just in the last couple of days where it came real, like I would have been stopped out at the 70 or either entered at the 75% mark or stopped out and I had it at 80. And Q stopped by NQ, 171 contracts. Right, so this is eight Russell stopped stop by alert at RT, 474 contracts. So 7.04 is the... Uh, so I'm not I'm not going to add to this because the red lug is so close. Uh, but I will watch this red lug, which is you can see everything's confluent up here. Red lug, you have the spot gamma, and you have the famous liquidity, the big money that always gets their way. Oh, by the way, you guys remember last week where I said we were going to crash and fall at liquidity below, and no one bet me. That was a smart move because that's exactly what we did. I don't know if anyone watched it at the end of the day. We sold off like. I think it was like 250 points in the NASDAQ. So anyway, here's some more liquidity. It's going to get filled, and that's the red lug, and I will look to get out of this trade up there. Um, but first and foremost, 80% uh, the of, the, of the ATR is 7.04, so I round up at 7 and a quarter. So I'm going to trail my stop 7 and a quarter points below the bottom of the zone. That puts me at, uh, what is that, 57, 56.75? No. 5725, sorry. A little discom discombobulated today. It was my daughter talked me into taking her to the gym to work out and I got here late and I missed some trades and um all over the place. So hopefully I'll settle down here. But this is where so I was long, we'll go over where I was long from where I added, and now we have a new volume event, and now I can trail my stop based on the new volume event, not because I don't want to give back my PL, right? You have to trail your stops based on something. That is relevant to the market, not your PL. The market doesn't care about your PL, right? So the market does care about a thousand cell ice. If whether this breaks or holds, right? So that's why I trail my stop. 80% of an 80 percent of an ATR, my drawing's not too good, but 80% of an ATR, current ATR is right there. And that's right below that zero gamma level too. So <clears throat> other than that, I'm my target is the red lug up here. 81 and a half, and that's where we failed yesterday, last night. You can see here, let's, uh, we'll go over market profile stuff in a little bit. So this is exactly, like, if we come up here and touch this, I'm out of this trade. And, you know, if it happens to blow through it, it will form new, lug, lug, we call them lugs, so I don't have to say lug, lug weight level, you know, every time. Um, if we form new ones, and I'll wait for a new setup, and then I can get back in my long, right? I, I don't mess SMP around. SMP Iceberg Cell ES, 712 contract. I don't mess around with the, with the lugs. The red and blue are the most powerful ones and for support and resistance. And you can see yesterday we struggled here, and then we did that overnight. So if we come up here and touch this, I'm out, or a, a volume event. And now we're getting another volume event. Looks like Cell Ice wants to play play ball up here after a, this rip-roaring rip rally. This is only 500, so I'll just keep I'll keep my stop where it is right now. Uh, it was a Nasdaq signal. Let's see what we got in here. So you can see this was 172. That's threshold. I use 150 in Nasdaq. Most days I try to go to 200, but you know lately it hasn't been. The volume's been terrible, so a bit more at 150. So. You, you can see where this started here, and you can see the swipes, sweeps. 
that helps you draw the zone as well. Just make sure a lot of times I, I get too used to these sweeps and I'll draw it like at the end of the sweep, but this kind of coming in all the way up to here. So make sure you get all of your, use your little cursor guy here, crosshair, and make sure you get all of the prices that the that incorporated that event, right? So that ended right there. So that's your zone. Let's see how the market is reacting to this. I'm sure ATR is ridiculous in here with this. Hey, we haven't seen this V bottom move for a long time, a couple months. The yeah. Euros top six each, 159 contract. All right, so ATR is 40 points, 39.71. So we don't know what the setup is. Again, I have six now. We've added a setup, six distinct setups with these volume, um, with the volume events to help us judge which way we're going to trade. <clears throat> so we need to see 40 points above here or below here to determine what this is. Meaning, it could be a dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber is the dumb money puke, the retail trader puke with no with no big money follow through, and it just fails, which it's looking like it may do or it's a stop and hold that's what i got in my long and es we'll go over where you get the stop run and it holds and it moves higher right and that's where the big money comes in behind it and it's not just a one-time puke by the retail trader um, so we need to see 40 points either way out of here to make a decision on this that's the first step you draw your zone figure out your atr then you come over here and you look at your lugs and again, these are Ludwig levels. You can go on her website. Um, she has a three, free three-day trial. Just say you saw this in the room, saw the levels in the room, and she'll give you some kind of special discount. I don't know exactly what she's doing, but just say you saw them in the, in the room. These are the second most powerful things I've ever seen in trading. Um, it took me a while to adapt them. And again, I had a, some guy telling me about them for like eight months, and I finally started watching them. And, um, he made like one, a million and a half bucks and he was trading like the year before where I mentored him. He was trading micro contracts and then he made a million and a half dollars just by using volume setups and Ludwig levels. So these things are ridiculously powerful for support and resistance. Um, like I've been telling you guys the last few weeks, I was not using these things as at, at full um to their full capabilities i was basically just using support and resistance but you can you can come up with a thesis or a story based on what happens what doesn't happen when we draw new lugs like for instance like this drew new lugs we were break we broke above the red here's your new lug well this should hold prior red and yellow and move to the next one instead we got below here that's bearish right so if you get a volume signal and then you take it to the blue lug we drew new lugs we couldn't hold below this and then right back up right so it's, it's way more than just support and resistance, and that's where I was not utilizing them correctly um, for about eight months. And then I went and watched the webinar uh, that I did with her where she kind of explained them to me. I rewatched it, and I like the light went on, and I'm like, what, what have I been doing with these things? And then I started incorporating them um, as far as, you know, where, where they're great is you, know, you put on a trade. Like, for instance, I put on this trade in the S this morning. And eventually, we'll get to this trade. It was right here. We pulled down after the number. You had this, and then you had a um, stop and hold. And I got in, and you just sitting. I got I got out of one here because the, this is I call it the baby lug. There was a you can see the target. These are useful as well for targets. Um, but when they're when they're on top of other things, meaning confluence, I'll get out of a part part of my position. And this was VWAP, as you can see, and the baby lug. So I got out of one there, and then the thing just ripped. What's great about them is and unless you see a volume event, you just sit in this trade and you wait for the tag, right? And it, you just know it's going to make it up there. Almost always, if it doesn't make it up there, there's a reason and the volume will tell you, hey, there's, there's, a, there's a bearish volume event. And you're like, okay, well, that should have made it up there. Didn't. I'm out because of the bearish volume event. And that very well could happen right here with what I'm in, right? I'm expecting that red lug. But if this gets below here, which is trying... Then I'm out of the trade. And then I'm going to be potentially looking short because it didn't tag the red, which it should have. Now you get a bearish event, which is about to be. Then I'm going to turn around and flip short. We, yesterday in my uh, PM webinar, my traders in there saw I flipped it like I was long, then I was short, then I was long based on volume events and how I was reacting at the Ludwig levels. So you got to be ready to, you know, to pivot. But I... Size for sell and 
Breath. So pivot doesn't mean just flip flop and you know just because I'm pivoting because of the volume events of what I expect to see happen. And again, this is how I was not utilizing the, the Ludwig levels properly, right? So we know the the red lug is up there, and that's my target. Well, you should not see a bearish volume event, right? You should see nothing but bullish events, which we've had for the last 50 points. Now something could potentially be changing. If I see a bearish event, I'll stop out of this, and then I'll look for a retest fail, and I'll go short, right? So we'll go over that. Let's quickly just go over this, why I got long here in the first place. This was down here. Yeah. So we had come down here, right at the number, and then we had the uh, 500 buy stops. Actually, no, this was, in, this was at the open. We'd come all the way down here into the number, I think. I restarted my book map, too, because I had it running all night. But you had this volume event right here, right? This was at around 23. And I knew we were basically coming into the yellow lug. Here's your volume event. It was a stop and hold, and that's what I got long off of, right? So that was my first position. You can see I actually still had the stop in there. Um, so I got long off there. You can see the long right here. Actually, I missed it because I was in and, out of my, in and out of my office. I missed a few trades, I, but I've, I'm glad I put this one on. I missed one in gold. I missed one in crude. We'll go over those so I, I can complain about something. But I had missed this. You know, I needed to get into this at uh, right here, actually, at 80% of an ATR because I'm aggressive getting in these setups above so the longs above the if we're above the yellow lug, I'm aggressively getting in these in these setups, right? So we were above the yellow lug. Here's your setup. So there's two ways I trade these: either aggressively, 80% of an ATR I'm in, or I wait for a full ATR retest failure. So that we'll go over the conservative entries here in a, in a couple minutes. But so anyway, I missed the. I should have been in right here, and I missed it. And I luckily it came back, and I got in. Not really happy, or I would seriously be not happy right now, and you guys would be hearing about it. So I got long there, then we came up here, and this was, I don't think this was, yeah, this was not threshold for me, and ES thresholds. I have thresholds for every product. It's in my SI indicator course um, where it's relevant volume, right? You don't just you don't just trade every spike in, in the SI indicator, right? It needs to be a certain amount of volume that matters to that market, right? So in ES, it's 500 stops. I will pay attention. This was not 500, so I didn't draw a zone. Then we had this event. This was 1,142 stops. That's relevant, right? There's your zone. And what I did is, one, I trailed my stop because of the new event, right? So I had my stop way down here. I was able to trail my stop. Again, I wasn't looking at my p &L. I was trailing my stop based on something relevant to the market. Trailed my stop to there, and then I added to this trade. Here, where's that? I actually put on too many. Oh wait, no, this I added. Did I add choice to this? I can't remember now. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no, I added to this, but I had on too many because I. We'll go over the risk calculator here, but I was risking basically from 63 all the way down to. I was risking like 25 points, and I should only add one, or almost 30 points. I should only add one on. I had two, so that's why I got out right there. But I had two positions on basically, and then we came up here, and then here's your new event, and I trail my stop below here, right? So if I stop out, I will make sure this goes a full ATR. If we retest fail, I'll go short. So that's that trade, and I'm about to get stopped out. Very nice of the ES to wait for me to get back over here, so I have to watch it. Let's see if my new handy dandy 80%, we've been, we've been talking about this in the room, I'm not kidding you. It's, it's been at least four or five in the last couple of days where it's done this. And if I was at 75%, I would have been stopped out and it stopped exactly and didn't fill me and then took off. But then yesterday, I think there was a couple of times it hit my 80% and I was saying that they already, they already figured out that I changed my ATR because the market is against me. Just kidding. That's what all traders think though. It feels very personal, I know. All right, so I'm still alive here. We'll see what happens. Um, I'll show you some of the uh, you can get into complaining mode. Some of the trades I missed. It's my own fault. Again, I wasn't readily available. I missed some trades. 
Let's see what's going on here. Did we get a... Um, so 65, we got, yeah, this is definitely an ATR, right? So this is a dumb and dumber setup. This is a bearish setup. Stop run. Paper did not come in. The big money did not come in and continue to push it higher. So this was a puke that wasn't real buying, right? It's buying, but it's not real. It's not, it's not uh, concentrated initiative buying. It's someone, traders puking out positions. That's, that's a different type of buying, right? That's why it's called a dumb and dumber. So... You know, you always got to look at soybeans here. I want to trade that. There's some big size going through there. Um, but, you know, you just got to assume that the stops are retail traders, right? That those are the ones that put their, put their orders in and in certain areas and get stopped out. So anyway, this was a dumb and dumber. Stop, run, fail. Here's your ATR. Now, if this retest comes back 80% of an ATR, I will go short with my stop 80% above there. So this, the reason I'm waiting for retest failure is because we're above the yellow low. Right? So if I'm going to take, I'll still take shorts above the yellow low, but I need to see full ATR retest failure, 80% ATR, I'll get short. Let's trust some of these current. This is one of the trades I missed. We'll complain about that here in a second. Twenty-two. I'll come back to that. Um, check it open soybeans. There was some mammoth sell ice here. You can see it's holding. So right at the open, five hundred sell ice in here. Yesterday was the green report too. A lot of times, like with the Fed or green reports, the big money plays the next day. They don't necessarily get in that day. So it looks like that's exactly what's going on here. So you had this zone here. We moved a little higher. Hold on. That's my natural gas number alarm. Um, then we moved up here. We put in more cell ice. So that's a new zone here. This that made them both black. Um, and then we failed to get an ATR above this zone because I was looking to buy this. and But we had just formed new lugs, so we were right around the yellow lug. I'll show that here in a second. So I was still waiting for one of these. I wanted to see ATR retest failure. It couldn't get an ATR above here and then just failed through that. And we're kind of holding through here. Um, I always default to the most recent setups. And the most recent setup is a second sell ice, right, that I would have traded off of. But something else just came in here as, we, as I was talking. I think, no, it's not showing up here. All right, so we'll just, I'll just wait for something. So the reason I was going to be conservative on this second zone um, was because we built new lugs. Right? So you can see here, come up here, all the cell ice was actually right here, and then we built new lugs. So I was going to wait for, because, you know, you don't, when we're just bouncing around the yellow, you don't know, what, I don't know whether I'm going to be aggressive or not um, with my setup. So I would have been, waited for an ATR retest fail. I would have gone long, and it just, didn't get even an ATR above that cell ice and then just failed. But you see where we held prior red, baby lug, and now it's trying to make a move above. I'm not going to do anything now because we did get an ATR below that most recent cell ice. But the next signal I get, I'm, I'm already I'm already basing a thesis on what's going on here, right? So we built new lugs, I and we failed below the yellow, but we did hold red and we did hold baby lug. So if this starts to move up here and then I get a you know a, a bullish setup based on what I saw, what didn't happen here, meaning we should have went and tagged the blue. We didn't. Now, if we get back up here and get above this yellow and I get a bullish signal, it's going straight to the red, unless you see another volume event. So you use these, and again, this is how I was not using these to come up with scenarios or thesis of what is what should happen, what shouldn't happen. It just really helps you, you know, have confidence in your trades. I mean, the volume setups are number one. Those alone should help have you, let you have confidence. But when you know what should have happened, it didn't, and then you get a bullish signal, you're like, it's go time, and you just sit and you let it go to the lug, right? That's 12 cents away, so we'll see what happens in there. Um, let's see what's going on in the crude here. So you can see, I mean, this, guys, it's all day long, every market doesn't matter, right? It's volume and these levels. Again, I don't know. I, I have a feeling some of her inputs, she's got, you know, the proprietary inputs that she uses. I think it's like probably pivots and market profile and whatever else she's using, but a higher power has spoken to her with these things because they are 
literally unbelievable. And then when you add in your volume, it's, again, it's the best edge I've ever seen. So we come down here, bounce off the blue lug, we form new lugs, what should have happened? Well, it should have, it, you know, because we formed new lugs lower, well, this should have held and moved lower. What, what didn't happen? That didn't happen and we got right back above the yellow. Here is the volume event that I missed that I'm gonna show you and complain about, straight to the red lug. Build new lugs, what should happen? We should hold directional yell, prior red, and head to the new lug, and that's what's happening, right? Doesn't mean something can't come in and, this, and, and things change, but unless you see a volume event, you're expecting that, right? That's where the volume, again, is the most important piece. Because if you're just trading lugs, yeah, they're powerful, but you still don't have all the information, right? If you're not using book map, and this information, you just, I don't care how great of a trader you are, you still don't have all the information. We talk about it every week. Just think how much better you can be. And this was actually set up here that I didn't see. Think how much better you can be if you understand how to use real-time volume, because that's what matters in the market. Not lines on a chart. What's really coming in the market is what matters. All right, so this was sell ice here. So this is a new event. So I was going to sell that stop area up there on a retest but now we have a new event so now i gotta wait and see what happens with this one all right so i was going to trade because we got the atr below here right i was going to wait and i was going to short it but something new came in so now i got to trade off of this i can either go long aggressively 80 percent of an atr or if this breaks i'll do that let's take one more look at our lugs to I don't like going long right below the red lug, so I will not go long this because we're so close to the red lug and we've seen how powerful the, you know, the lugs are, right? So it's like, I would have to, so say this sell ice that basically came in right here, right? So say I got in, I mean, it is 60 points, but I'd be, the ATR is 38 points, right? So then I gotta risk the size of this, and here, we'll even look at what I have to risk here if I do wanna put this long on. And you got to determine, hey, do I want to trade one for one, meaning I'm risking one to make one. So this zone, so ATR, let's just do this real quick, 38. 80% of that is 30.4, so we'll just say 31. 31 points, both ways, right? So that means if I get in, I'm getting in 31 points above this zone. That's 80%, that's the aggressive entry. So that means I'm getting in at 70, 71. But then I have to risk the size of the zone, and then 80% of an ATR below there, right? So just alone, the entry to the stop, that's 62 points, and then the size of the zone is another 25. So that's 85 points I'm risking to try to get to the red lug that's only 60 points away, right? So I don't think that's good risk-reward. So all I'll do, you know, I may miss this trade. I mean, it may rip, and I would have been in it, but I'll just wait for us to come up here. And if this is truly bullish, it'll come up here. It'll draw new lugs, and it'll probably come back. I'm sorry, the red will be here. This will be yellow, kind of like you see here when we went to the downside. We'll see. I'll see yellow. I'll get a new setup, and then I'll go long. But I do not mess with the, the, these lugs until they draw new lugs because that's how powerful they are. All right. Any questions so far, Bruce? It's a lot of chirping. Yes. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, a few different questions so number one um is about uh your course uh let's see alec is asking um can you yeah talk about it a bit does this uh si indicator come with the course uh no it doesn't um, yeah i always get that question no so oh you, know, you, oh, you already you guys, answered that book, sorry yeah book book map is they run the show with the bond the, the indicators and the it's book map i have nothing to do with that i my course is based on my interpretation of the volume based on my time as a large trader and how I would react if, you know, when I had a lot of volume out, a lot of size on, aka volume, um, how other traders would react because back then you can see exactly who you were trading with. So that's, it's not hypothetical setups. The setups are all based on my true experience. But I base, I basically just came out uh, with my interpretation of what's going on in the volume events, right, based on my experience. So I have nothing to do with the SI indicator except for using it and helping traders understand how to utilize the volume setups that occur. So hopefully that explains that. If I got stopped out of this ES trade, I'm going to complain. Let's see here. Nope, I'm still alive. 
Look at that. Look at the 80% new, improved, 80% ATR. Look how close. How many guys, you guys been on these webinars for last year. How many times have you seen this exact fill for me? And then it does that. And I'm just, I complain for a full hour of the <laughs> webinar, right? I moved it to 80%, avoided another stop out. Still, still alive. I mean, it still can come back and stop me out, but I mean, that's 15 points. So now I'm still, this is what I'm playing for. Nice. And that's where the red lug is. And that's actually a little higher. It's 81. So that's what I'm, that's what my expectation is. If I see a new event and it fails, then I'll get out. Just like I was about to get out here. Look up, look at that. It's amazing I didn't get stopped out again. Uh, um, the the time frame on the on the lugs, uh, you, those are volume charts, right? It looks like it's not time based. Yeah, you can use time based. I have these are um, for each different product. It's six thousand so volume. Is, yeah. Right. So this is six thousand volume. So every time six thousand volume trades, it draws a new bar. And these are Hikanashi. Again, I had someone help me set this stuff up because if you use Sierra chart. It's cheap, but it's cheap for a reason, right? Because you got to do everything yourself, and I mean everything. So she's got these for Ninja Trader. I think she's looking to add a couple other pl platforms, but don't even ask me. Like I, I was trying, for instance, this, I set this up so long ago, I couldn't even like my crude. I can't even remember how I did the Hikanashi. I can't get it to work, so that's why you just see bars. But you got to. I mean, you can see my my what I use. So you know, obviously, the same volume isn't crude as an ES, right? So this draws a new bar every time a thousand trades, right? And beans, it draws a new bar every time 500 trades, right? So obviously just like threshold, just like the thresholds are different, it's the same with this, but I use the volume to draw the bars, but you can use, it doesn't matter, you can use five minute charts too. Right? I just use the volume. Um, like Russell, I use 500 and Q, I use uh, six, that, that's actually too much. 6,000 is too much for a Q, but it's fine for now. All it's going to do is just not draw bars as often. It's not a big deal, but you just kind of want it where it's showing you, you know, more bars or not too many bars. There's like a, you know, happy medium there. What else, Bruce? Uh, yeah, so also, um, uh, let me just kind of read it out loud here. Um, uh, if you're in open position, uh, heading toward the next lug, uh, and stop runs and sweep are stop runs and sweeps considered a volume event or only icebergs uh, and um, and stops. Um, so do you, I mean are you using are you um, how how are you yeah, utilizing stop, stops are absolutely volume events. No no sure sure sure, sure. stops and icebergs are sweeps and absorption is the question. Uh, I'm not using sweeps yet. I will eventually. We've been talking about in the room um, like what you just saw right here. Right? I mean this is part of a Beauty. part of a stop run. Yeah. But a lot of times you'll see sweeps that aren't stops, right? You just got to be careful. I don't know why this is, but the thresholds are so much higher in uh, on the sweeps a lot of times than the setups, right? So, for instance, in ES, like my, my threshold for icebergs is 700. Well, you'll see routinely 2,000, 2,500, 3,000 swipes or sweeps. We call them snakes in the room. Um, you'll see that routinely. And that, you know, so if I see, meaning if I see 700 sweeps, I don't even pay attention to it. And you would think I would because it's the same type of volume as an iceberg or, you know, there's someone sweeping. For some reason, the thresholds are way higher. So I just need to watch them a little longer and I need to come up with my thresholds for the for the sweeps, which I will. And then I'll trade those as volume events too. A lot, most of the times they're on top of the SI indicator events, but sometimes they're, they're you know, individual. So, uh, but right now I don't, if I see a ton you know, like for instance, if this just came in here and this wasn't a stop run, I would probably draw this on because a thousand in gold is a ton, right? So let's let's trade this. By the way, this is a lot of stops. Someone just major puke. So this is going to do one of two things. This is going to be retail puke, no follow through. Like if look, if you don't think the big money has the same information, then you're nuts, right? So they see this too. If they're looking to buy, they just pile in on top of it, and that's what's called a stop and hold. If they're not interested, you get the you get the buying, which is not real buying. It's just a puke. Then it fails. That's a dumb and dumber, right? So now that's the first step. Second step: check out our lugs. And these are this is called tick strike, by the way. We'll go over this too. Um, I'll go over that in a little bit. I don't want to get off track here. So. One hundred fifty contracts. Don't here. This is one of the issues with Sarah Chart. You gotta refresh a lot of times so you can see here. 
this is an example of how I was not using these lugs properly before, right? So come up here, build new lugs. Should hold. Once you build new lugs, it should hold prior red, new directional yellow. We couldn't hold the red, couldn't hold the yellow, got down here. So what's your expectation when that happens? Well, you're, you're saying we're going to go tag the, the blue and then baby lug. That didn't happen. So you got to pivot. And then, so the minute this go, gets up, like this is telling me something, I was expecting this, that didn't happen. Now we come up here, we're above the yellow. We didn't tag here. Now you get a, a, a say I get this turns into a bullish event. That's go time to the red lug, right? So say it happened right down here, which it did. One hundred fifty-two I'll show you this here in a second. This is the trade I missed. Stock, stock Gosh. 175 Don't the markets know I'm trying to do a webinar and not to be firing off stuff when I'm talking? Scott, you could just, you don't you don't have to talk and 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 explain a lot of things. You can just trade. No, seriously. Like uh, uh, we, I mean, the other week when it was it was super busy, it was awesome just to peek over your shoulder and watch you manage. Um, it was awesome. Uh, uh, that that is just a rare rare thing to see. Uh, so uh, if you want if you want to just do that and just say like yeah I'm going to do this I'm going to do that blah 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 like feel free whatever you whatever you're comfortable with. No, it's fine. Okay. I was just saying because I was in the middle of saying something and the market started firing off. That's all. Okay. It was very rude of me. I think got to be pretty close to the yep, close to the red level. Let me get this drawn real quick because I got to remember I wasn't going to go long right here anyway. So because we're, we're probably going to make new lugs right now, but we are right on top of the red lug now in ES and I can get out of this trade. There we go. Yeah, I, I can't believe liquidity is going to get filled up here. Actually, they pulled up and put it back in, but I, that is a shocking occurrence, isn't it? Wait, no, it happens all day, every day, in every market, um, because the big money runs the show. That's all I ever tell you guys. So you can sit here and say how manipulated the markets are, which they are, right? The big money pushes it around, whatever they want to do, or you can complain and not make money, or you can understand what they're doing and join them. So you see here, this is right on top of the lug. I'm getting out of this trade unless we just plow through right now. I'll give this a second. The minute I start seeing uh, red bubbles, meaning market sellers, I'm out of this trade and I will wait. It could bust through and make new lugs and that's fine. And then I'll wait for another volume event and I'll get back long. I may cost myself a few points and I'm fine with that because I we've already seen. Do I want to risk and hope we build new lugs and have this happen to me right here? Not so much. So that's why I will get out. We, we saw it yesterday in my room. We tagged it. I got out. We came down. This wasn't. This was overnight. But we tagged it. Came down. Had a bullish event. I got long again. Came up. Tagged it. Got out. There you go. So let's see what happens here. And you have a spot gamma level here as well. So I have no problem getting out of this trade. It was a great trade. A great ad. I didn't get stopped out with my new handy dandy 80% of an ATR. There's a red bubble. Give it a second here. By the way, uh, Gazoo um, uh, has a link here for you for ATR that you can use in your uh, thinkorswim charts. Um, so uh, uh, input an 80% uh, ATR. You might want to cool. take a look, look at it. Yes. Yeah. Someone in my room came up with that as well. I just haven't had a chance to look at it. Okay. Um, but yeah, thank you. I'll look at it. All right. See how it's struggling up here now? Um, so you want to be careful of doing this. If you do this, you're going to see red bubbles, right? Try to keep it relative while you add it. So I just, if I see any kind of red come in, I'm out of this puppy. But you see the stocks too, they're still buying the stocks. We'll go over this too. These are the stocks that comprise the indices, comprise the indices, what the indices are comprised of. These are the highest weighted stocks that the futures are derived from, right? So it would behoove you to know what the stocks are doing. Right. If you come up to to you know important levels and you hear nothing on these, and we'll go over my settings and everything, you may want to get out of part of your trade, right? Because this is what drives this. And this trades independently, but this is what this is trading off of, especially the algos, right? I mean, this is right at the lug. Eighty-one fifty was or eighty-one quarter was the lug. What do you got? What do you got? Es? Could you push through? So the other thing we're, <laughs> I've been doing in my room, 
pretty funny. I won't do it now because of, maybe if I get in it new along. So there was a uh, trade. All right, I'm out. Um, there was a trader at my firm who actually is the, he's the one who got me into the, my trading firm, Kingstream, when I, you know, back in early 2000s. He used to, every time he'd get long, he'd pull up the uh, Jefferson Jefferson's the show, the theme song where they're saying, we're moving on up. And he'd blast it throughout the entire trading firm. So we did that the other day and it actually worked. So if you guys ever need the market to go up, just blast the uh, Jefferson theme song. You'll be good to go. All right, so that's why I got out. And then I saw the market selling bubble, I'm out, right? You guys, be careful how you use, I, I hear so many times with newbies like, um, I, well, I traded the bubble, so you don't trade these bubbles. All it is is buying and selling, right? But at certain areas, you wanna use that as information, right? I don't trade bubbles, but I knew this was the lug. I knew this was the spot gamma. I knew the liquidity got to fill. If they start to hit the bid, I'm out, right? But be careful how you use these bubbles. They're not, this is the information, not the bubbles that you need to be using to, to base your trades off of. All right, hold on a second. Oops, I missed this, my own. Oh, other account. All right. So what do we have? Nothing, nothing. Remember, every spike is not a tradable event for me, right? And I've been watching this thing for two years and thousands and thousands of setups. So this is not tradable. That's not tradable. I need to see over 500. I need to see over 500. We'll go over to this PL, by the way, is overnight. I had an overnight trade on. That's why I had that split. Let's see what's going on here. So is this going to, again, this is gold, are we going to, is it going to be a stop and hold and fire, or is it going to be no real buying and then we die? I'm leaning for the move out of here, right, because what we just talked about before everything started firing off, what didn't happen? We did not, once you saw the new lugs and we failed this yellow, you expect down here. That did not happen. Now you're up here, here's your, here's your volume event. We're going to tag this, if not higher. If we, if we move higher out of the zone, if it fails, then, so this is, you know, things change in the market. What am I expecting? It should hit this, right? You shouldn't see a bearish volume event. If you do, now something's wrong going this way. We didn't tag it, you go short, and then you use these. So things change all the time, right? That's why if you're trading just with the lug with levels, you don't have all the information. You don't have the key piece of information, the volume. That The volume tells you, like if you're long here, you're just sitting here saying, all right, you have no idea what happened here. You have no idea there was a thousand lot stop run. You're just sitting here praying and gets to the, to the red. Well, if this goes like this, we know why that happened because that stop run was just fake buying and there was nothing behind it. Your whole, if you're trading love with levels by themselves or any, any indicator by themselves without understanding the real time volume, you're sitting there holding the bag when it does this. You have no idea why. If you have the volume, you know why. Right? That's why it's the most important piece. All right, so we'll let this bounce around in the zone for a while. Let's see what trades I missed here. Soybeans. Nothing's really come through here. That's interesting, though, again. So the other mistake you do not want to make is buy ice, sell ice, buy, sell ice is bearish, buy ice is bullish. Yeah, paper's taking a, you know, they're taking a stand and it's good to know which way they're they're going because they are right more often than they're wrong, but they are wrong, right? So that's why it's not just, I see sell ice, I'm selling. I wanna see the area hold and then start to move lower and either, you know, 80% ATR, ATR retest failure. You don't just hop in short because you see sell ice. They're wrong all the time. That's one of the setups, broken ice, right? So just be careful that you, that there's even guys that you know are new to my room and they'll be like, but this was a bullish event. It was buy ice. Well, it's not a bullish event until it shows it can hold and move higher, right? So it's the area that's important, not necessarily if it's buy ice or sell ice. So hopefully that makes sense. But you do put in the back of your mind, right? We rallied up. 500 sell ice, which is huge in, in soybeans for one event. And then you had some more sell ice up here. And you can see it's starting to, it's having had trouble here, it had trouble here. It doesn't mean you just blindly short it. Again, I'm, I am I will trade off the newest event um, if we go retest fail. And I think actually we did this, I should be short this right now. But the point is, 
you know, you, you keep this in the back of your mind. You don't just blindly throw on a short, right? And then when you start getting setups to the downside, you're like, okay, I already know paper took a stand here and the right. Now we're, we're going down to the other look. But this setup, I actually should be short. Pretty sure. Let's see. Because we never, so this was the second event here, right? So we had the first event, that was this. Then you had the 200, that's threshold, that's this. We never got an ATR above there, right? That's what I look for to go long. Remember we were at the yellow log too, we built new logs. Now we did move an ATR below here. ATR is 4.15, so we moved seven cents. Here's your retest, here's your failure. We never got an ATR above here, and here's your failure. I should be in at 80% of 4.15. Let me put in 4.5 in my handy spreadsheet that I should have been using for the last year. 3.32, so three and a half cents below this zone. So I should have been in this trade. I'll get in, I'll get in a couple of these right now, but I missed my entry. My entry should have been three and a half cents below the bottom of the zone. So 20. 26, 25.50. So it's pretty close. I missed it by, I missed it by a cent, right? All right. Um, wish I could put on that. Of course. Of course. Did you see? Tell me the market doesn't hear me talking. I'm like, I should put on more than that. It just skips down. Guys, this is this is how it's been for 20 years, just sitting here talking to myself. That's why I like doing the webinars and have the trade room because at least I'm talking to somebody instead of just talking to myself. All right, you're not gonna fill, okay. All right, so now I'm filled on that. Again, I cost myself multiple points, but so where's my stop go? 80% of a, an ATR above the top of the zone. So we said it was three and a half points, all right? So that's 34. might have too many on here. So I'm risking basically 20, 24 to 34 is 10 cents. That's where you go to your, we haven't talked about the risk calculator yet today. So it's the same as the ES, it trades in, the tick value is one and a quarter point, right? So I'm risking 10 points for a lot, the exact size that I need to be having on, based on my account size. Right, so that's correct. So I'll short that. All right, let's see what's going on here. Look at the, look how good that exit was there. Wow, it, it's almost like those Ludwig levels are, are magic. Once again, this is why I don't mess around at the lugs. Tagged it, I'm out, boom. Like I said, do I wanna sit there and hope we build new lugs or do I wanna get out and wait for new lugs because that can happen and it looks like it might. Volume and lugs, most powerful edge I've ever seen in trading besides my scalping days, and that's not possible anymore because I'm not a computer. All right. Um, trying to see. So you, you know, uh, I already missed the boat on this, but I was going to say you can play this as a retest fail, but again, you're risking down here to try to get back to that lug and we tagged it. I don't know. I, I'll wait for a new event. That's That was a good trade in my nemesis. Yes, and I usually don't get along, so I'll take that and run. <clears throat> um, let's just take a look at NASDAQ, see what I missed here. But remember, I wasn't willing to go long here anyway, even if this was a long setup, because we're right on top of the lug. Let's see if we build new lugs and I'll reassess. We did not, and you see what happened. Oh, look, we hit the lug and failed. Shocking. That's why I wasn't willing to take that long setup right into that lug. If we would have built new lugs, then I'll take then I'll take a long setup. So what I could do here now, actually, what I'm supposed to do is short a setup at the lug. I should be short this right now, unless we want an ATR above this. Let's see, 95 up to. 28, 
So 32 points. That was not a full ATR. 41's an ATR, so I should be short this. What did I say it was 41? I'm sure they're not going to wait for me to do all this. 41. 33 points is 80% of an ATR. I will be aggressive. That's, that's pretty much right here. Hold on. There's just something innate in me where I will not chase the market. I always like put it up here. I might not even get filled on this now. So what was my, what should, if I was on this market, like I should have been, what, what, when I heard this setup, what should I, have, um, where should I have been short? 32 points below here, which puts me, it's uh, 51, 51 three quarters. I should have just said it. That's right here. I should have just hit it. So if you're confused where you say, well, I thought you only take retest failures above the yellow lug, right? Because it's obviously a bullish scenario if you're above the directional yellow. I, that's true. Unless we tag, unless I get a setup right on top of the red lug, then I'll be aggressive shorting it. And that's what I just, that's what I'm trying to get involved in right now, the short. I just missed it because I was spending so much time with everything else. So I'm not going to chase this down 20 points. I'm just hoping, I mean, it's NASDAQ. Very likely it's going to come back and fill me. But if it doesn't, then it's my own fault because I missed the entry. All right. Any questions, Bruce? <clears throat> yeah. Um... Sam is asking about um, uh, if you could share more about um, uh, how you used to trade as a big trader. Uh, for example, getting caught off sides, would you wait for a pullback um, so you can get out? Um, and uh, uh, you, you've talked about this before in the past, um, how you you anticipate that uh, that it, it'll be it'll drive the market back down again. So that's how, how you have your kind of um, resistance become support and vice versa. Right. Well, the, the waiting for it to come back is the whole essence of the retest fail, right? right so that's right. You know, that's how I used to, up to a certain point, right? There's a certain point where you say uncle, and that's when you see the pukes. But to say I was short right here, right, and it did this. The way I used to trade it, I would sit there, and it would start to run away from me. So say I sold like 2,000 in here, right? And then and I was sure I was right, and then it did that, and I'm like, oh, no. Okay, this, I mean, it was way less points than this, too. Back then, it was so condensed. Um, I'm not very happy. I just missed that NASDAQ chart. I should have just sold it. I knew it was close to that 80% of an ATR. I should have just went to the market. This is not going to be good. Just please pop up there to fill me. Um, so say I was short, right? And then it ripped in my face. Again, it was never 13 points. It was like, I mean, when you when you have, do the math. If you have like the 2,000 on times 1,250 a tick, it's a lot of money, right? So I'm talking like back then it was, the volatility was like, 10 right so it's like it would be two points in my face my puke point would be three points and I, it'd be like moving away from me and i'd have i keep selling it and I, they keep going away from me and i'm like please just come back here please god just let it come back into this area and i will cover my trade i won't even be greedy and that's what the essence of the retest failure is it happens all day every day guys like this is that's why you want to know what the big money's doing or anybody's doing right because you know when you can see it on this on the si indicator because so many times that's why you see or even like balance series right, right? I'll give you an example here i gotta i got that sort of position on so i gotta see if i can trade my oh this is working well all right see what happens when i don't look at markets look at that all right so now here's a new event right so now i can trade on my stop and or add to the trade Am I doing? All right, so that look at this ice come in. Came and started coming right there. You got your white snake. I know Bruce loves when they call them snakes. We have in the room we have white snake and black mamba. This one's white snake. Let's make this by ice color because that's just so important right here, right now. I'm kidding. I just you ice iceberg by NQ. 180 to contracts. All right. I don't think I got filled. So I'm going to cancel this. Um, so I got time there. Soybeans will probably give me a couple of seconds to get out of this. Um, 
I'm going to cancel this NASDAQ because something new just came in, right? And I can trade off of that. Kind of sucks. I miss this. Look at this ice coming in here. Now this is now this is a tradable event, right? You can see the white snakes, sweeps, white sweeps. I'll call them white sweeps for Bruce. I'm going to get rid of this old zone because we get, definitely got an ATR above there. So that's done. Let's draw this quickly, and then I'll head back to soybeans so I can trail my stop and or add. There's that. There's that. You can hear the, uh, oh, that's bonds. So you can hear them hammering on the tick strike. We got to talk about that too. Some of bonds hard though. That's that noise you can see right here. And I want to show you guys something from bonds yesterday too, where you could account for and actually equities too with the cumulative volume. It's useful in certain instances. I'll show you that too if we get a chance. All right, so this is the new event, right? So now I wanted to short aggressively off the red log, right? Let's move this out of here. Um, but we are still, I was willing to short aggressively up here, which I just missed, right? And I've already cost myself like 30 plus points, 40 points, 30 points. Um, <clears throat> but now we're getting an event right here. Well, we're still above the yellow log. So for me to short this now, I need to see full ATR retest failure. Then I'll go short. On the long side, I'll go long aggressively off this new setup because we're above, above the yellow log. Right. Here's your setup. Let me uh, just quickly, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna miss this exit in soybeans, which it's trying to do to me already. All right, so this is the new event, right? ATR is 4.57, which is pretty elevated for soybeans. That's one. Again, you, this is dynamic, right? So you can trail, even if you like nothing new came in, you can trail your stop based on the new ATR as it changes. 3.65, so three and three quarter points, I'm out of this. So the top of this zone is 15 and a half, 19 and a half, 19 quarter is where I will exit this trade. Right? And then what I'll do, say this holds, right? And this would be broken ice. This is what I'm talking about, right? Hey, someone's stepping up and buying right here. Big money. Doesn't mean they're going to be right. This NQ ice ice for buy NQ, 150 to contracts. Really happy I didn't put that trade on. Stock sell NQ, NQ stock, stock sell NQ, 177 contracts. That's really upsetting. So we're still on an ATR below here yet. So, but look what's below here. Hey, what do you know? I wonder if they're going to get their fill down here. So what I want to see now, <clears throat> the still that we don't know what this is yet. We need to see an ATR above or below here. If this goes ATR retest failure, I will go short. If it goes ATR 80% of an ATR above here, I'll go long because we're above the yellow log still, right? So we still don't know what this is. But actually, we have a new volume event, so I got to draw that in. More by ice. So you can do this one of two ways. S&P ice iceberg by ES, 707 contracts. Let's just do this for now. And that's the newest event. I'm going to make that a different color. How good was that exit in ES up there on the, the red lug? That's what I'm talking about. It's a be, if you're, you know, if you're waiting for new lugs, you're you're holding the bag for. I'm sure it's moved back down like 30 or 40 points. We'll look at that in a second. So anyway, I will add to this trade now. If let's just take a look at our lugs, make sure we're not on top of a red lug or anything. Or blue lug, I mean. So what's the expectation? Just drew new lugs. Let's just get every product at one time firing off in here. Uh, with your new lugs, your expectation is it should hold prior blue because we just broke blue to new lugs. It should hold this. That's your target. So I'm adding on any bearish signals aggressively with this is my target, 16. That's another 12 points away, 12 cents away. Crude ICL, 151 contracts. So 3.7, we said three and three quarter points below here. I will add to this. Um, it puts me at 850. No, 750, 775. I will add to this trade. Actually, I don't think I can only put on two for that ad because I'll be risking all the way up to here. So basically, I'd be risking from 
seven, so we'll just say eight up to 19. That's 11 cents. This is the most important part, guys. We talk about this every week. 11 cents, I can put on three. If you're over trading your account, you're gonna blow out your account eventually. You might get lucky for a while. If you have like a $10,000 account and you're trading the normal size products, just again, PayPal everyone and split it up between all the people on this webinar and send them your money because you will lose your account eventually. Take it from me. It's gonna happen. Gotta trade appropriate size for your account. Like in my auto trader, I have the auto trader. You guys can see it on my website where I you know, give trade signals to the brokerage and they, they fire them off for all the accounts. Um, I'm, you know, the account, the base account size in there is $12,000 and I'm trading micros for that account because you, you can't trade. I mean, eventually we'll get up to, you know, as the account grows, but you can't trade regular size product or you'll blow out. You have a bad day or two, you're done. You're, the account's blown out. All right, so this is holding, what do we say the ATR was? I may turn around and go along here now. 44. Move this calculator. Thirty-five. Thirty-five quarter. I can get long. So thirty-five points above this. It's forty-five. So I'm pretty sure I can only put on a one lot too with this because this this zone is. So I'd have to go to um, stop out. I'd have to go 34 points below here. That puts me at basically 50. And I'm getting in at 45. So I'm risking almost 100 points on this trade, right, based on the zones and the, and the ATR. So I can put on one lot. And that's fine because the volatility it, it could easily move to 300 points. And that's that's the goal. So on top of this, newest, this was the newest event, this dark blue zone. That's at 10. 34, when I say 30, 35 points above here, it puts me at 45, 45 quarter. Again, we don't know what this event is yet, for sure. I'm willing to get in aggressively because we're still above the yellow lug. We don't know what this is yet because it didn't go in ATR above or below or above. If it goes below, I'll wait, I need to wait for a full ATR retest fail to get in short because we're still above the yellow lug. Hopefully that makes sense. Questions verse. I'm missing some stuff in uh, crew too. We'll go over there in a second. I was going to show you guys. What was I going to show you this? We'll go over this in a second. Um, yeah. Let's see what so, here. questions here. Hold on just a moment. Um, Sam's asking about uh, what what do you recommend for the uh, one lot uh, uh, trading um, on the on the S and P E mini? So uh, why 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 are you trading one lots? Trade trade ten micros. Well, what's your account size? Well, yeah, and I guess like percentage wise per like is it two percent risk uh, per per trade or you know what what are you yeah, usually? So again, you have access. To, members have this. They've they've made this many times. So. We'll do, give you an example. What's your account size? What did you say his name was? Sam? Yeah. What's your account size, Sam? Uh, his question is what, what account size you recommend? To trade a one lot? Well, you know, it's depending on how much, you, first of all, it's depending on how much you have to risk. But most trades, especially off the zones, especially with the volatility, you know, to be able to put on here, let's see. So, so say you had a, a $20,000 account. It's a 10, 10 to $20,000, I guess that would probably be 80% of traders, I would think, right? So that means at one and a half time percent, or we'll, we'll even be aggressive, right? Let's make it 2%. I'm using one and a half for my auto trader. Let's use 2%. That means for a trade, you can only risk, the risk 2% is that that's the most you should be risking on any individual trade. That means you can risk $400. That means if you are risking more than, 
16 points on a trade, which happens all the time, especially with volatility, you can't even put on the trade. Right? So, you know, most of the time I'd say your ATI, you're right around 10. You can put on one lot, 10 or 11. You can put on a one lot, right? So why not just trade? You know, so what you do here is to say it's still the same $20,000 account, right? This is based on the full, the, the main product. Make this $200,000. 4,000 risk, but it's still 400 on as the micros, you know, if you're trading micros. Now you can put on, say it's a 16-point trade, you can put on five micros. So what's good, I, I know you're going to be paying a little more commission, but what's great about this too, it's going to teach you how to manage multiple. So it's not, you're not all in or all out, right? You can, at an area like you saw today, I got out at baby, uh, on that ES trade, I got out at, I got out at baby, baby lug and VWAP, right? So this allows you to learn how to, you know, get in and out where you and still have a core position on where you're not all in or all out, right? So again, yeah, you'll pay a little bit more commission, but I think it's definitely worth it. And you can, and you can, you know, put on five. And it's going to teach you. And when you see five on, it still has a mental effect. Like if you put on five E mini regular, you're like, you know, probably crapping your pants. Pardon my language, right? Especially if your account size is twenty thousand dollars. Well, this just teaches you. Okay, I get a five on. How am I going to manage that, right? So there is nothing wrong with trading micros. I trade micros on a couple different accounts, including the auto trader, right? So again, I mean, you need at least at least a twenty thousand dollar account to be trading a one lot for for the volatility the way it's been lately, right? I mean, look at the ATR right now; it's it's almost ten. That's just the ATR. You're not talking about the size of the zones. You're talking about I'm I'm gonna probably be risking, you know, twenty points on a trade in ES, and that's fine. You know, that sounds like a lot, but it's not. The ES is moving fifty points at a time. Let's look at the uh, let's look at what I think we just moved fifty points down right now. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, we went from 80, 81 down to 53. That's 30 points, right? So it's like, if, you, if you're thinking, wow, I can't, 20 points. This, I told you guys this the other day. There was, some, there was some guy in my room who put in his cancellation, and he put, he put in the notes, I don't like the way you, you man, or your risk and your trade. So then I messaged him, I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, well, when I trade the NASDAQ, I only like to risk 20 points and or, 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 um, I'm trying to make 20 points and risking 10. Well, what the hell does that mean? That doesn't, the market doesn't, if you're just, if you're just uh, risking 10 points every time you put on a trade and not taking account, uh, account the volatility, you're going to lose probably 90% of your trade. Like that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And sadly, most traders trade that way, right? You've got to adapt to the volatility. And then you adapt to the volatility and you cut down your size. I know it feels like you don't have a lot on, but the way these markets are moving, you're getting 30 point moves in the ES. So if you're risking 20 points, you already had a 30. So say I risk 20 points up here, there was a setup. I already got 30 points in my favor on the move down. And you could have got out. And then here's, here's an example where if you're trading the micros, so say you put on, say there was a setup up here. There wasn't, but say there was, it happens all the time, obviously. You put on five. Well, you're like, oh, here's VWAP. Um, I'm going to get out of, I'm going to get out of two here. Right? If you have, if you're trading the, the regular size contract, you're all or nothing. And you're like, oh, should I get out of here? There's no signal, but I don't want to see this come back. Okay, I'm out. And then you see the thing do this. If you're trading micros, yeah, you got out of a couple, you still have three on and you can trade it down here, right? I'm getting ranty again. Any other questions, Bruce? Is still, I'm not in added to this or stopped out of this yet. So we'll see what happens there. What's going on here? Oh, I got filled on that. Little pigs. Right to the tick, pretty much. Let's see. A couple points. No, that's five points. I'm filled on that. So so what I'm doing now, what I say I have to risk. The reason I have one here is because I got to risk 34 points below here. Is that, that's, if I remember correctly. Hold on. Here is 42.7. And you want to trail, change your stop as the, as the volatility changes, right? When it starts to shrink and change, you can trail your stop differently. So 34 points below the zone. That puts me at uh, 51. Hey, right, right on this liquidity. I'll put it just below there, but I have a feeling that's where we're going. But I follow my rules. Again, there's so many times like yesterday. <clears throat> that's a lot. We're going to have to look at Euro. 441. Wow. 
Let's see, we're gonna put on a Euro trade. I haven't done that in a while. That's a ton. Let's see. Um, but yesterday, you know, when I got short at the red log, it felt terrible. It was like this is there's no way this thing's gonna stop. I mean, the tick strike was going crazy. I was like, what? This is not gonna work. And but I followed my rules. That's why I have the rules. I don't trade up on what I feel or you know what I think is gonna happen. I'm letting the market tell me what is happening. And that it felt terrible and it turned out to be a 25 point winner to the downside right so look at this wow this is a lot i have to break out the lugs and euro there are some snakes here but we'll just start it here i'm sorry sweeps go here go there that incorporates this event right that's step one All right, so that's that. Now let's look at our lugs. There. Oh. I gotta refresh this. I'm sure there's new lugs. There should be anyway. No, not yet. This just my the server might be down or something because I can't believe this isn't new logs yet. But if you watch that video again, you can I can try to repost it. Um, but I put it in here the last few weeks that I have a panel level. So this will be telling if the, if we do come all the way up here, and this is correct, and we haven't drawn new logs, and this gets back below the red. That's telling you that is a that is a bearish big time bearish sign. But as of right now, you know, again, I think there's new lugs in here, but I don't know. So let's just play this as it is. So first of, first of all, let's figure out our ATR. Hold on. I'll find it. There, there you go. See that? Just built new lugs, right? So we're right at the yellow. So this should hold directional yellow, worst case scenario red, and move higher with this as your target, right? So we're right at the yellow, so I will, you know, right when we build new lugs, I'm waiting for retest failure, full ATR retest failure either way, right? Because we had just built new lugs. That's a different scenario than if we're like up here and we come, come into the yellow lug and we're still above it, I'll trade that setup aggressively. But we just drew new lugs, you don't know what's gonna happen here. So this is still a huge setup. I will. Try, I want to see ATR retest failure. ATR retest failure. So let's figure out our ATR. It's kind of tricky with 60 the way they have it displayed. No, is that it? Oh no, no, that's not it. I can't I find this? So how are we? Sorry guys, I haven't traded a 60 in a while. <clears throat> but hopefully we can put out a trade just to show you it doesn't matter what market you're trading. Why can't I find 60 if I'm in a chart? There it is. Let's see what's going on in here. ATR is a 10. I think it's 10 ticks. You can always judge too. I, again, there are different uh, percentage or decimal places on there, but you just got to look at the trade and you can figure it out pretty quickly, right? So, so that's a 10. I'm just wondering if it's 10 or 100. <laughs> if it's 100, that's a lot. It looks like it might be 100. No. I mean, this trades in half ticks, but I'm I'm thinking that's that's ten. Meaning from eighty five down. Uh, no, that's not right either. Bottom of this zone was at 80, 88 and a half. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So that would be seventy eight. I'm look, looking at the last three digits. So seventy eight and a half. So I don't know what I'm going to do here until this goes either. And whatever it is, 
This is 99, so I need to see 09 up here. Or I need to see, this is 88 and a half here, so I need to see 78 and a half down here. That would be a full ATR. You can kind of judge, right? If, you, if it confuses you looking at the decimal because it's different for each product, just look at the way it's trading and see what how many prices like these setups are incorporating. So I need to see 10, which would be more, it's like 20 ticks, but again, 88 to 78. That would be a full ATR retest failure. I'm in an 8% of that or, or that. So keep an eye on this. It may not happen before the end of the webinar, but we'll keep an eye on that because this is major, major size. All right, let's take a quick look at the positions we have on it. I get stopped out of NASDAQ yet. Nope, it's waiting for me to watch, which is really nice of it. Euros talk 60, wow. 156 pound graphs. I'll go back to there in a second. Let's see what's going on in soybeans. Where are my charts? There you go. All right, so this is still. Did we didn't get an ATR bloater, did we? No. We only got down to nine. So I'll still add to this as an ad, remember? So we're short from all the way up here. It didn't get stopped out, so that's still up in the air. Let's see what we missed in curve. Any questions, Bruce? Yeah, just a minute here. Uh... No, there was still, yeah, there was a bunch of sell ice here. Yeah, it looks like I'm missing a trade per usual. Yeah, just to, just to let, let everyone know if you if hadn't been uh, uh, following in the tweet uh, in, the, in the chat there, though, that, that um, currency futures, uh, uh, icebergs do not work for the currency futures. Uh, it is stops uh, and also the sweeps uh, that work in there. Right, right. Well, but you're, ta you're talking about the, you're not talking about the, the, the CME. You're talking about the other, the euro, whatever they call that. The, um... No, the, the, the icebergs don't work um, on the... Um, uh, currency futures like 6e and everything uh, you can see it's flat through the cme yeah yeah it's it, it's that's just the way it is um well, this, the stops are working stops stops are fine icebergs aren't really yeah i don't that's know why know. <laughs> uh, I, I i can find out more about that but um uh that you can see it's flat line there there's no icebergs oh yeah again i don't trade this very often obviously at all lately yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Let's unfortunate, but uh, um, it sure is. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's see here. Um, but I'll still trade the, you know, I'll trade the stop run. Oh yeah, I mean the stops are still golden. I mean, look at that. Can you massive... put in the icebergs in six E? No, the, the, the no. CMA I mean the native not... native icebergs are that 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 MBO data for some reason like it's it's not disseminated. So um, but I'm saying, do they allow? icebergs in there like if i'm a big house can i put an iceberg in there and i don't know if a native native icebergs is that's another question i'll have to find out that's, yeah please find out that's yeah but but uh, right, synth so anyway, synthetics for sure here. synthetics no problem of course well then yeah and then set in synthetics you want to bring up let's see if we have this it should be set up in here so you go to the little microscope here strength level right yeah strength level is the synthetics um but uh and again it's it's there um it there can be inconsistencies here there can be false positives uh, just a right well that's why you guys don't incorporate that information in the si indicator anymore right? exactly so the the um the the um synthetics like is we don't really know with the mbo data we know for sure there's no it's just fact right so, you know, it is what it is, guys. I mean, you know, I'm, there's 20 other futures markets you can trade. If, if this one's not showing you all the information, then just don't trade it, right? But well, you but you, you, you've like got this. a great stop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is, this is, this is a tradable event, trust me. A thousand stops, that, that I will be trading that one way or another. All right, so quickly, get a retest of the zone and crude. Let's check out our lugs. Whether we want to be... All right, so we're still above directional yellow. That's what you expect. Old directional yellow or, and prior red, which it did, didn't even get close to the red. So I will be trading bullish setups aggressively. As long as this didn't get an ATR below this zone, it's still in play for a bullish setup. ATR is 
So it doesn't trade in half ticks, so full ticks. The top of this, the bottom of the zone was 16. We traded down to 96. We did not get a full ATR below there. So this is still a tradable event to the upside as broken ice. All right, so then we figure out our 80%. That's 23 and a half again. 80%. This is already set up to figure out 80%. 18.8, so 19 ticks above the zone. I will go long, as long as we don't get an ATR below here, which we didn't. So that, what are we, what are we at, 27, so 47, 46, I will go long this market. And there you go. And that's based on this sell ice that came in. Actually, you had even more here. This is even a bigger zone to the downside. Let's incorporate all this. You want to, you know, make sure you get all this. And actually, it's to the upside as well. You had that's only 100. This one was 148. 150 is my threshold, so you definitely want to cover that one. You mean you could incorporate this if you want? Just pop it up a little higher. We'll do that. Still alive in NASDAQ, by the way, I think it stops out of there. Yep. All right, so that's the zone. Well, we got to go change this a little bit. So we're going to go 19 ticks above this, 31, so 50. There you go. If I get filled, my expectation is red lug, which is 92.21. And you want to watch, I might take a couple off. This is one other reason why I want to trade micros. I, I can, you, know, you can take a couple off at the baby lug, too, if it struggles there. We'll see what happens there. It's 91.50. Still alive, still holding this zone. Let's take a look at our internals as well. If we didn't look at these. I know we were pretty negative earlier, but we recovered handsomely. Here's the ADD. Got down to almost trend down day. Anything under 2,000 negative or 2,000 uh, positive is usually trend day. You can see a touch there and just ricocheted. And that was caused, you know, obviously these are all the stocks, or advanced decline of the stocks, and that's what caused the futures to rip. Um, you can see the VIX here too. Get this stuff out of the way. This was, this down move down move again, it moves opposite of uh, equities. We moved down, that caused that. Now it's starting to rally again. Uh, tick, we've made some extreme down moves. Again, the red is, if you see anything near a thousand, that's something to note. We're at uh, we hit a thousand a few times and nothing on the upside. That's interesting. You know, for later in the day, if we start to sell off, this is Nasdaq tick. About the same. Hit about eight hundred both ways. All right. So uh, nothing really to be gleaned from that besides the bungee jump. Feeling crude yet? Keep an eye on that, and then I want to see. God, bonds are getting killed. I mean, I don't know if they're getting killed, but they've been selling it for the whole hour we've been on here, hour plus. Let's check it out. All right, I did not get filled on that yet. On that, add to the short side. Um, Here. I was going to show you guys on two of months, and then I'll show you in equities. That's actual gas. This as well, guys. If you want to be trading something that moves, holy cow, this thing is just and it just respects the zones perfectly and lugs. It's ridiculous. This moves. This thing's moving 100, 200 ticks at a time. Natural gas. Uh, you know they don't have a micro product, but they have a. It's called an NQG. That's the CQG symbol. That's it trades a quarter of the size. It's not quite micro, obviously. It's not 10 percent. But where are the bonds? I thought I had. I know I had bonds in here. Hmm. Don't know what happened to bonds. All right. 
Let's just put it in here. I wasn't getting any signals. I don't know how this got beat up. Well, we gotta wait for that to load, but it doesn't matter. It's obviously it was getting smushed. Here, we'll look at the five minute chart instead. Yeah. So quickly, the tick strike. <clears throat> I get some questions about this after the. So I've been using this pretty much for 10 plus years. I used to use it, you know, before bookmap and everything. It would just alert me if something's, so I'd have all these different markets up. I'd have, you know, silver, you know, crude, whatever. And that you can hear like bonds, it alerts you, hey, something's going on in there. So what this is telling you, it's telling you the speed of the orders coming in and the size and that's an algorithm that they have that um, then alerts you, right? And you can set this to whatever level you want. So the higher, it goes from one to 15. It used to go from one to 10, it's one to 15 now. So if I put this at 15, it's not going to make a noise unless it hits maximum selling. That's how I, you know, I put mine at 11 for all my products because I don't, if you have it on one, then it'll go off nonstop across the board, right? If I have it at 11, then it's only going to tell me when there's some serious size going through. And that's all I really want to know, right? So that's important just to be alerted for other markets firing off. Uh, but then, you know, I use these to know if the stocks are agreeing NQ with the move. Size for by NQ. 185 contract that's gonna be a new event so i can it's right in the middle of that zone though um i'll come back to that in a second so this is just telling you what the what the main these are the highest like this these are this is 20 percent of the of the index that the futures are based off of these these few stocks right they call them the fang stocks so it's really good to know when we come to an area if you're you're looking to short or, or go long or whatever or get out of some, if these stocks aren't doing anything, you may want to get out of some. Right? It's just another way you can manage your trades. Um, so this is on. You go to my website. This is on there. You can get discounts to that among other stuff. Everything on my website, you can get a discount for. Just go to scottpolsonytrader.com. But that's what this is, and you can see nothing's happening right now. Right? So that's why it's a chop fest. You can see we've been just chopping around here. For a while, pretty much for the three quarters of this webinar. It's chat fest. I don't know why that's black. There you go. So it'll be interesting when these things start to pick up and which way they do. That's just going to help you judge. Just another factor. Again, it's not like you're going to be confusing yourself, like with you know you guys that have 85 lines on your chart. Where you can't make decisions that's just just giving you information that's going to help you you know in conjunction with the main stuff which is this number one and then lug with levels all right so you can see this buy ice came in here 208 it's right in the middle of this zone you can actually shrink this down now though so i can trail my stop a little less and i don't have to go as, i mean it's not much i'll just leave it because it's not it's like five points so it's inside this other zone So remember, I got in aggressively off of the zone because we're above the above the yellow lug. If this thing stalls off and stops me out, and we get an ATR, contract. Another event. This is almost certainly coming down here to stop me out because this liquidity is here, and we all know the big money gets their way, and they're going to push it right into liquidity. Um, but I can trade this now as long as this gets below. Well, this is the new event. There's actually more coming in, so we'll draw this new zone. Let's wait a second. But I can trade that to the downside as long as we get full ATR retest failure. Let's see where we are on the lugs. <clears throat> Still above the yellow log, right at VWAP. Uh, nothing really in market profile. We're below yesterday's value area. But you can see when we opened up overnight, we got down into this and we just ricocheted right off this composite. So are we going to come back and retest and get inside and do that? We'll see. Let's watch myself get stopped out first, though. Uh, never got filled on crude yet. Still in the middle of that zone. NQI Siceberg sell NQ 152 contracts. All right, I'm going to draw. I'm going to get rid of this because we've had a couple new events. So this is the newest one. Now you got almost. This is almost over. It's over 600 cell ice. This is what you want to see. So you know, so there's, you know, whoever's buying in here is running right into a wall. I and mean, look at it, it's still coming in. Whatever way we move out of here, you're going to get the major move. 
And that's what you wait for. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not going to trail my stop based on this new zone. I'll just let them stop me out. I don't really want to risk more points because I think we're going to crash now. But let's see. We're definitely going to hit this liquidity like right now because paper will push it into their orders because that's the game all day, every day. <clears throat> all right, so again, we're still above the yellow look. So I cannot, I'm not going to take any short signals aggressively, right? Meaning 80%. I got to wait for the full ATR, which is 40. 2.56, so 43 points. Say, hey, look at that, it's gonna get hit this liquidity. So I need to see 43 points, I need to see a retest, I need to see a failure, then I'll for short. S&P stocks, stock sell ES, 503 contracts. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna hop off here pretty soon, I'm getting tired. <laughs> right, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna get rid of this zone, because it was from earlier. We already moved way above there. Here's your new event. And it's only 430. You know, you could, you know, there's times where if it's really dead and you, have, you haven't been seeing a lot of size, you could make this a zone. It's close to threshold, right? I'll just draw it right now because it has been pretty dead. But you want to, you don't want to get in the habit of keep going lower and lower and all of a sudden you're drawing zone for like, you know, 300, 250. Because I'm telling you, you want a, you want a, enough size to trade it. And you can see the swipes, was it, they were a thousand, the sweeps. This was a stop run, so we'll make it yellow. Do I get filled with my beans, my ad? Trade and I, I didn't even have to watch it. SNP I size for by yes, 712 contracts. Right. Now we got, now this is a delayed double whammy, right? So you had to sell, so a double whammy is when you get this, the dumb money retail puke into the, the big money. And you can see these are two events, but they add up, they're right after simultaneous, it's this and this, they add up to over 700, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this zone a little more because this is a double whammy now. It's just a delayed double whammy, meaning here's your cell, here's your puke, and now here comes the buy ice. So we're going to make this, and we can trade off this event. And then I'm going to hop off. We're going to hold you to that. Like that. <laughs> well, you know, like 10 things will fire off now. Cause Every that. time you mention, I'm, oh, I'm going to hop hey. off after this. It's yeah, like cause the markets the markets know what I'm doing because they're against me. I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's the first step. What, what do we see here? We're above the yellow lug. So I will take bullish setups aggressively. Bearish setups. I need to see full ATR. That's the second step. What's the third step? Check your ATR. 8.79. So I round up, if it, you know, it's over eight, eight and three quarters, so nine points. That means I have to see nine points below this zone, and then a retest, and then a failure, 80%, then I'm in, and I'm risking 80% above the zone. I know it seems like a lot, to, that's a lot to occur, but it happens all day, every day. And you, listen, again, I talk about this every webinar. That's how I trade these zones. How you trade the zones is the art. The science is this. There's no disputing what's going on here. How you trade that you may say, you know what, I don't want to wait for, I think based on, if you're looking at something else and you're like, this is very bearish, I'm getting in, the second we break below the zone, fine. You can trade these however you want. That's how I trade them based on watching thousands and thousands of setups over the last three years, right? So if you find a better way, we talk about this all, all the time in my room. If you come up with a better way, I, I will definitely listen to it, right? I don't incorporate 
stuff easily into my trading. But if you show me something and I watch it and it works, 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 well, I'm not going to ignore it, right? So this is the way I trade them. If you come up with a better method, let us know. I'll check it out. But this is the way that I've determined the safest way to, to trade these where you're not just getting in and then you watch that, right? I've just watched over so many setups where if it does travel the full ATR SMT and retest. Again, this is like the guys holding their breath, waiting to come back, and as soon as it comes back, then they initiate to get out, and that's what this is. And that's what I how I trade it. But you can trade them any way you want if you think you got a better method. Again, this is the science. There's no disputing this. This is the art. All right, what do we got in here? All right, this is all happening basically in the same zone. So this zone is really important here. And we got a really important here zone here in NASDAQ. <clears throat> Still haven't been stepped out of this little piglet, but it's going to happen here shortly, I think. <clears throat> so I need to see again. I got to see 42 points below here to even consider shorting this. I got to see a 40, 42 point move below this zone, retest failure, then I'll go short because we're still above the yellow up. Right? So liquidity got their first fill. They're not done, of course. They're not happy until everything gets filled, and then it could possibly do that, but we'll see. <clears throat> it's all one big game. If you can know what the game is, then you are ahead of 99% of the traders. Still not filled on this ad in soybeans. I don't think anything's come in, no. We'll see. So remember again, we're we never got an ATR below here. So I will I could potentially add to this trade if we get eighty percent of an ATR above this newest setup, right? Because we're still above the yellow. Look. I don't think that's going to happen, but it doesn't matter what I think. I'm going to let the market tell me. <clears throat> That's that above the yellow lug, above the yellow lug. Russell, we didn't talk about this, but there was some monster iceberg in here today, right at the open. Look at this. Only a thousand. My threshold for Russell is 150. So about 10 times or eight times that. You can see it was just off to the races. And I'm sure, I'm almost positive I missed a trade in this. And we have to be above the yellow lug. Yeah, so that was. Yeah, that would have been down here. We would have been above the yellow lug. He's out of the way. No, maybe not. This will make me happy. Let's see. We were below it at the time. What time was this iceberg? This was at 7.37 my time, 8.37 central. No, of course. We were right here, so I would have been if I would. I marked marked it up, and then something else took my attention as usual. That was this is a ice or buy ice. I would have been in a three quarters or eighty percent of an ATR right there. I would have risked eighty percent below there, which would have put me back below the yellow lug, and I would have caught this entire move. You would, I would have probably, I would have got out of some here, probably all of them. But I bet you there was another setup where you could have got right back in. Right, we drew new lugs, get back in. Because so many times when you draw the new lugs, it'll come back and retest the yellow or the red. And so many times there's another setup, you just get right back in the trade. Let's see if there's anything up there. Remember, this is dwarfing any normal size because this is showing like relativeness. So like this dwarfs anything that may have happened. So let's see. No. Yeah, no. Well, you could combine these two. These were back to back. So this is why I have this on. This is my settings here. I have it on reset, right? Because I want to see, and you want to make sure your stops are at 10 seconds. Why does that say sliding? I don't want sliding. I have my uh, icebergs for a minute, and I have my stops at 10 seconds because I stops should be instantaneous. I don't need to see them over a minute. I want to see the, the quick spike. Icebergs sometimes take longer to develop and then just make sure. So this is the, the sub chart and then this is the, the alert. So make sure that these times, so many guys in the main room too, they have these different. So if these aren't matching, these two down here aren't matching the ones up here, you're going to get different voice alerts 
based on the, the time period, right? If, you, if your time periods are off. So make sure these are matching, right? Iceberg's at 60 seconds, iceberg's at a minute. Stops at 10 seconds, stops at 10 seconds. So I have it on reset mode. So you want to pay attention if there's like spike, spike in the same area, then you can add them together, right? So this was 100, this was 50, that's 150. So I'm pretty sure this was right at the red lug and I could have traded off that and trailed my stop below there and still been in the trade. This was a monster trade. All right. Any other questions, Bruce? I'm going to hop off here shortly. Uh, no, no, we're all caught up. Cool. Let's take one more look here. All right, still alive on this one guy. So remember, I will trade 80% above here. I will put on another contract based on this new setup. Well, actually, that's pretty much right where the old setup was, so I'd be risking double. I probably won't put on a new contract. If this was lower, say this was like, you know, down here or even up here, and I got a new setup where I can trail this stop, then fine, I'll put on another one. But me putting on another one is just like me having two on, risking 100 points. Right? So I probably won't add to that, but I still got the one on. There, I have a question on that, Scott, actually. Um, because uh, I, I always kind of find myself going through that <laughs> Um, kind of uh, Q and A of, of like, well, yeah, I want to add into a trade, even though it's at the same level. I'm adding more risk. However, right. if I see though a big event that gives me more edge, I still I still know I have an edge. Um, I still add into the trade. Um, yeah, uh, I don't because I had the edge in the first place, right? So it's well, like, but it's a new yeah, event. It's a new event, event though. It's a new event. Right. It gives you more it's, insight in a in a bigger edge. But you're, you're well, but you're, you, the the question is like, well, do I or don't I add at that point? Because yeah, I'm more certain that the pro I know the probabilities are higher now. So, but I'm also adding at the same level. Right. So what's it's, the point? It's all, it's all trading is is probabilities, guys. That's all it is. You're gonna have losers nonstop. It's when you, you know, it's a percentage game and it's a grind and you gotta, you know, you make a little, lose a little, make a little, little, little make a little lose a little and then you catch the huge day and again we talk about this every webinar then you have four or five days that make your entire year that's what trading is if you think it's something different you're incorrect where you think you're gonna grind out a profit every single day it's not gonna happen um yeah percentage wise i just got filled and crude of course because i they knew i was gonna hop off <laughs> remember we're gonna be long this so quickly but yeah, if you see another event there, you, you can view it that way. I just, you know, I had the first event, that's enough. And I have my, I, I don't want to risk double the size. I'll wait, if we move higher and I'm able to trail my stop, absolutely. Okay. But you know, that's just the way I trade so, it. Bruce so, trades it a different way. There's nothing wrong. I'm not saying that's the wrong way. I just don't like doing that, my, personally. Okay, I mean, because you're wrong. not you're not getting anything out of the cost averaging um, at all, you know, or right. very, very little. Um, but right. uh, uh, it, yeah, anyway, okay. Uh, point made, understood. So this is about the same. So 19 ticks above here, or um, 19 ticks below this zone. My stop now, right? Because I got in aggressively because we're above the yellow lug, and now my stop goes. The bottom of this is 006. We'll just say 06. It puts me at 86, 87. So I will stop out at 87. I might have too much size on here. Let's check real quick. You should do all this stuff before you put the trade in, obviously. Come on, look at my one guy holding on here. We'll go back to MQ in a second. Of course, we're trying to get off like every time. Um, so I'm in at 50. I'm risking down to 88. So that's basically a 42 tick trade. Actually, I think I can have I can have full size on here. Let's go here. Let's make sure this is correct. Forty ticks. Make sure I can have more on. Forty-two ticks. I can have five on. So let's put on one more. Again, you want to figure all this out before you have trades in. I just got lucky that I hung around here. Maybe, or maybe unlucky. <laughs> We're just gonna come back. But all right, quickly. New event in Nasdaq. So now this is what I'm talking about. So now this is higher. So first and foremost, I can trail my stop now based on the new event. There you go. 170 stops. All right, let's get let's let's get some of this stuff out of here. I need 
that. There. All right. So now here's your new event. Draw your zone. Start it there. Up to there. Let's make it pretty yellow. Fox CL. 259 pound That's awesome because now I can trail my stop on crude. Right, let's just turn it. Let's, let's see this first. I got full size on this puppy, so I want to make sure I'm not. Uh... So here's a new event. 200. Please don't free fall before I get this drawn. Please don't do it, crude. What do we say, 19 ticks? So now I go 19 ticks below here, it puts me at 41. So now stop is trailed to 41. So I'm basically risking nine ticks now, based on the new event, to make, make a run all the way to lug. And I can add to this, which I will, right? Check out your lugs. What's our objective? Red lug, 9221. We do have baby lug right here. I, I will still add into a baby lug. I won't add, like if we were up here at the red, I will not add to that. But baby lug's 9185, you can see it right there. So how do we, what do we say, 19? So 19, that puts me at uh, 93. That, that gives me another, that gives me another 30 plus ticks to the red lug. I'll put that on. So that's 93 here. I will add, that'll be above the baby lug, which is good. And then we know our red lug, which is our objective, and or higher. If it can just bust through, there's 9221. So this one's kind of iffy because I'm only risking, I'm basically risking 30 ticks. I mean, I'm risking 50 ticks to make 30 ticks. You don't really want to do that overall because that's not how you make a living trading. But, I, you know, that'll be profitable. And the first trade I'm not going to lose anything on, so I'm fine with that, right? Or I'm going to lose a couple ticks if, if that fills me and comes back. And then the, the red lug is up here. Well, that's that trade. Let me make sure I show my stuff here. Right. That's that. Quickly, NASDAQ. I can add to this too. Now, again, because this is higher, this is how I add. I need to see it not in the same area. First and foremost, trail my stop. 39. 39. So come here. Bottom of the zone is at, uh, say, 15, say 15. That's 85. About 86. So now I can move my stop from here all the way up here. Right. Yeah, it's in the middle of the zone. Actually, what I'll do is I'm going to move this. So this is where you have to use a little judgment, right? I, do I want, if this pulls back, which it very well could, do I want to stop out right in the middle of a volume event? No, I'll put it just below there. I won't go ATR below there, but I'll put it, you know, I'll risk 10 points. And that's nothing in NASDAQ. All right, so now if this moves 31 points above here, now I can add to this trade, right? If this does this, it stops me out, goes a full ATR, it a retest and it fails, and then I'll go short. Because we're above the yellow lug still, I need to see ATR, or I'll add, and then stop goes in the same spot. Hopefully that is clear. Move their hammer every time, every time. Let's see. I mean, I'm not complaining, because this is getting hammered now, but I got filled on my add. I can bring it over. Go. There's the ad. Right there. Objective is pretty close here, so I gotta keep an eye on this because I remember I do not mess around at the at the blue and red lugs. I will get out unless it just rips right through there. Yeah. This looks like it's far away, but it's really not. There you go. So baby lugs at 04. So I will watch that closely. Well, this is going to be my finale on this webinar. Let's see what happens here. We're pretty close right now. If I start seeing, if I start seeing, there's oh, there's the baby lug. If I start seeing blue, I'm going to get out of a couple here, and I'm going to get out of all of them at the at the blue lug. Let's see what happens here. 
Remember, blue lug is out at 14. Here we go. Just want to get out of. That's close enough to blue lug. I'll get out of four if I see this thing start to rip back up. Right, I'm out right there. I'm going to keep a couple on, see if we can hit the blue lug. I don't mess around, man. Like, if it's close to that lug, I, you know, four cents is kind of far, but there's a baby lug right here. So, say there was no baby lug, I won't get out four cents in front of the lug. But I mean, if this gets in when a, within a couple cents, like it's right, you know, dancing around here, I don't need another, I don't need to try to squeeze out one more cent to watch it do that. I'll just get out. And then again, if, if this is truly continues to go, we're going to build new lugs. I'll wait for a new short setup and I'll get back in. I, again, we, we saw how powerful that was when I got out of that ES trade, right? You don't want to be messing with, this is why I use these things. I would have been, I wouldn't hold in the bag for 30 plus points. It's coming back now, but this wouldn't have felt very good, right? So I just get out. I wait for a new event. They happen all day, every day, in all these markets. All right, on that note, um, actually, I would just put this in so I fill there. Let's do any. Because I don't want to miss that touch. There you go. That was a good trade, too. Quickly crude. May come back and stop me out for break even. So once again, you should not be seeing a bearish event, volume event. If I see a bearish event and we didn't tag the, the red lug like I was just expecting and we get ATR retest fail, I'm flipping in. I'll, I'll be stopped out and then we'll go full ATR and then I'll go short because you should not, you should see nothing but bullish events until we get to the red lug. Things change quickly, right? But I'm ready to flip if this doesn't agree with what should be happening. They know I'm watching, so they'll stop me out. Do I have enough here? Yeah, I got five there. Okay. So that'll be a tiny loss if I get filled on that, and that's fine. I, so just imagine if you're trading anything here and you were long, you're like, yeah, I got it. I mean, you don't see any of this. You're sitting there holding this. This thing can do this, and you're like, well, what the hell? Why did that happen? Well, because it ran in it. You had your dumb and dumber. This is the wrong color. This was a stop event, right? This was buying. That wasn't real buying if this fails. Sounds like you have an there ice cream go. truck. In you should not see a bearish event now. What'd you say? Sounds like you have an iceberg. Uh, I, I mean, an uh, ice cream truck in the uh, neighborhood or something. That, uh, that, was, that was my alarm. Oh. I don't know why it went. I don't know why it went off right there. But all right, so there you go. Unless there's any other major questions, I am out of gas. Hopefully this holds. If not, I'm out, and I will potentially look for a short. All right. That's my trip. Yeah. All right. Sounds sounds good. Um, so, uh, well, I did miss a trade here, by the way. What, what am I doing here? Why was I getting long this? What am I doing? That was a stop. That was the dice. Should have been 80%. And that's already 15 points up there. That's nice. I completely forgot about that one. Oh, well. Well, quickly, just for good measure. Here we are. Red lug. The lug, I mean, I will pop. if I see blue here, I am out of this trade. We got, could you bust through? That's this, by the way. And that's this. Magical lugs. Telling you guys, this with the volume is the best edge I've ever seen, ever. Times 10. All right, that's it for me, Bruce. Out of that, that was a great trade. Had a good trade in the S. Still alive in NASDAQ, was able to trade my stop. The crude trade, at worst, is going to be a few tick, few tick loser. Once again, my awesome 80% ATR kept me in that trade. If I was 75%, I would have been filled and complaining. Still <laughs> alive in there. There you go. All right, excellent. Uh, great stuff. Uh, Scott, I mean, uh, I love it when you, you, you just got, you're on fire with all these markets and, uh, it's just, uh, it's awesome to watch. Except for this one that I missed. So I, th this is my typical, this is the wrong mindset to have, but I won't like enjoy my winners. I, I, all, all I'll do now is stew that I didn't put this long on right here. I mean, I am long NASDAQ too, but 
I should have totally been long this setup, right? We're above the yellow lug. I should have been at 80% of an ATR. Again, that was just, just slipped my mind. All right, Bruce, well, that's it. Uh, so you guys, I do this twice a day in my trade room every day. Most every day, I usually golf on Thursday afternoons, but this is exactly what I do in my trade room, right? You get the course. If you don't know the setups, you learn that stuff, and then you are on your way to becoming a profitable trader if you follow your rules. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting uh, pasting into the uh, chat there um, your contact information uh, again. So uh, j just in case if you guys are, are interested, uh, just reach out to Scott here. You got his email, etc. Cool. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Right. Thanks, Scott. Awesome. And uh, yeah, go go enjoy, please. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Well, I'm going to the voice management open tomorrow and Sunday, so I'm definitely going to blow some steam off this weekend. <laughs> Excellent. I'll be on the 16th hole on Sunday, so that's going to be awesome. That's that party hole, part three. <laughs> okay um <laughs> all right e excellent scott so like a two-hour uh, uh webinar here basically um uh r really uh, appreciate it uh and it it's really great to, to peek over your shoulder uh on these trades and see how like uh uh you know you're waiting for your event uh you're you're then you you check out the order flow around that event you check out your higher time frames uh and then you manage your your trade um, uh, all I'm according consistent. to your, all according to your your rules that are very very simple and straightforward. Right. And again, all the time I feel like I, it's a bad trade or I don't think something's going to happen, but I still put the trade on. This is it's fine. So again, look what's happening here. So hopefully we draw new lugs here and then I get another event. I'll go short again. But yeah, I mean, so many times I, I feel like it's going to be a losing trade. It doesn't matter what I feel. I follow my. If I follow my process, right? And if you have a, a process that gives you an edge, which this does, again, there's no bigger edge I've ever seen, then all you do is follow your rules and put your trades on. You're going to have losses and you're going to have huge wins, right? That's trading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just like today, well, uh, you missed one or you were upset you missed one and then you had a, a couple losses that are turning into winners now actually, but, uh, uh, and you're fine. Uh, plus you had some, some massive winners. I mean, that's a really good kind of, uh, uh, uh overview of like what you just talked about. Right. Exactly. All right, guys. So hopefully you learn. That's the whole point in these webinars. Um, I'll see you guys next Thursday. Thanks a lot, Scott. Thanks. See you guys. All right. Bye-bye.